tech companies operating in Israel now face uncertainty and disruptions ahead of the country's shift into war mode. Join us right now with more on what's at stake. Uh, our crowd funder and CEO, John Medved, uh, live from Jerusalem this morning. Our crowd is one of Israel's most active venture investor platforms. Uh, John, we appreciate you joining us. Before we even get into that, just tell us what it's been like uh, to be on the ground, to be in Jerusalem on a, uh, in this moment. It's a horrific moment, unfortunately. Uh, we've had a very tough half a week here, uh, and we've lost a lot of really great people. There's been a lot of heroic defense. We are, I think, a little bit embarrassed by some of the mistakes that were made. But we're very confident. And right now, I would say the country is unified in a way with an unbelievable spirit of people chipping in. There have been 300,000 reservists called up, including two of my own kids. Uh, everybody has somebody, you know, in armed forces. And we're not fighting overseas. We're, we're fighting for our, our homes. And uh, this has been, to a large extent, like an Israeli 9-11, except the only difference is that by losing almost a 1,000 people, it was though Israel lost, if it was 9-11 terms, if, if, if America had lost that many, it would have been 40,000 for America, or 20 times the, uh, the death. So. This has an impact, but what's remarkable is how Israel is resilient and how, despite all of this, life goes on, our businesses go on, and investment goes on. And uh, we think that this actually, if you look historically at how Israel stocks and Israel investments have performed as a result of, of, of war, believe it or not, they go up and it becomes uh, actual buying opportunity. It's hard to talk that way a couple of days into this. And, you know, with uh, the, the terrible tragedies that are unfolding in the stories. But from a financial standpoint, we're going to be fine and actually emerge stronger. So, John, just but um, what does it feel like to be on the ground in terms of safety? You said life goes on. You know, most of the reports that we're hearing about in terms of just being on the ground have been that the streets have been relatively empty, there's not a lot of traffic. Are people going, people going to, to work, to the office and things like this right now? No, so, so first of all, we've you know, been largely a, a work at home place. We're a tech you know, country, uh, but the, the streets are quiet because if there's a, an air raid siren, you have to go you know, quickly and, and seek shelter. I've had nine uh, shelter seeking moments here in my Jerusalem house. My, home office from speaking to you now is right down the door from my my safe room uh, and but we're used to it it's it's a weird world we live in um, and by the way what's remarkable is how many tourists are still here they're they're getting used to it I have a a, a niece who's here for a gap year who is doing well uh, and the the hardest part is simply, hearing the stories of people who were butchered in their homes, the hundreds of kids who were slaughtered at this uh, music festival. But it's a, it's a very, very confusing moment personally, because we're also incredibly aware and support and encouraged by the support we're getting. What the U.S. has done for Israel now in terms of just the statements from President Biden, former President uh, you know, uh, Obama saying that we stand squarely with Israel while you dismantle Hamas. The fact that, you know, the Eiffel Tower was lit, the White House was lit. Um, people, I think, understand that what we're fighting here is not about politics or territories or any real issues. It's just pure evil and barbarism where people are, are, are essentially anti-life. It's We're fighting ISIS. And you don't negotiate with ISIS. You don't try to understand them. You have to dismantle them. Obama was right. And I think that uh, our country is united. The tech sector is leading as usual. You know, we represent 50% of Israel's exports. There is no slowdown in any of our exports, no slowdown in any of our companies. My company is fully operational. We launched two new investment deals uh, this week, millions of dollars is being invested 
uh, in terms of just a commitment to the future. Because I, I think what we stand for is life, life and seeking peace. And we'll get through this. We'll mourn and bury our dead. We'll hopefully get back our hostages sooner rather than later. But then we'll go on and we'll continue right. building this wonderful country. John, um, before we go, and you, you've, you've walked us through what hopefully would be an effort to get to peace, but how do you see that play itself out, given all that Look, we're seeing? I, this has been something, I, I this has been an elusive goal for, for a very, very, very long time. But you, you have to uh, note the progress that has been made. And in fact, what I think was one of the causes of the timing that Hamas chose was the uh, coming peace with Saudi Arabia, which the crown prince of, of the kingdom said is getting closer each and every day. And Hamas and their masters in Tehran felt now is the time to strike because they are against this historic reconciliation. What has happened with Israel and the UAE and Israel and Bahrain and Morocco has proven that we can turn the Middle East into a garden again. We can make it a source of goodness and of, 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 of literally tackling together world problems. And once we bring the Saudis into this, it's going to be unbelievable. And I think that uh, in a strange way, this unites right. the forces of good versus the forces of evil. And I really, I, I, I don't talk usually right. this way. But John, did you see, uh, we, we got to go, but did you, did you see that uh, MBS... Uh, is been standing up for the Palestinians in all of this? Well, first of all, there's a difference between standing up for Palestinians and standing against Hamas. Hamas is evil. Hamas kills and slaughters children with knives at their throat. They mass rape women. Okay, they kill people at a music festival. There is no politics in the world that can justify that. So there's no, what we all want is a good future for the region for the Palestinians, for the Jews, for the Israelis, for the Saudis. We all want that, and that's what I believe MBS wants. Okay. I do think that we're going to find a way to make that future happen without Hamas going forward.